I saw a video on YouTube of Mifune Sensei throwing Harai Sri Kamiyashi. This was a couple of days ago that I saw it. Uh, it was only a 10 second video, but it made me think about some questions that I've been asked along the way and I thought I would address in this video. Uh, the first question I always hear, of course, is how does he do it? How does Mifune Sensei do it? And of course, the, the sort of implied question is, how do I do that? Why am I not being taught how to do what he's doing? It doesn't look the same. Um, I think also people will say that it does not appear that Mifune Sensei is doing the standard form, that he seems to leave out things, or some things don't seem to be as as uh, as obvious as as um, exaggerated or as powerful as you might expect, or maybe what you're taught when you're taught to do the techniques. So the question is, what's going on there? I I would argue that uh, Mifune Sensei's technique is is dead on. It's 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 exactly correct. It is correct in terms of all of the internals that he's doing. Uh, there are some external things that, that may look different or, or, or off, uh, but I would argue that they're probably not terribly important. And that may be, in fact, part of, of what he's trying to show you. I mean, the, the, the one question you, you would have to ask is, what is Mifune's purpose in demonstrating the technique? What is it he's trying to do there? And I would say clearly, he's not trying to teach you the throw. If he was trying to teach you the throw, then he would certainly take a longer time to do it. He would set out some time. He would step through the, the different parts of the throw and, and uh, detail that and make sure that you know how to do the throw. And that's not what he's doing. And clearly, that's not his purpose. I think he is trying to show you the essence of the throw and that if you do the technique correctly uh, that you can generate a lot of power. It's very easy to do. It's fun and light and fast and doesn't rely on brute force. And yet he's able to uh, do these, these amazing throws. So he's trying to show you, you need to focus on something besides uh, whether or not your, your toe is pointing this way or your hand is pointed that way. He's, focusing on the really uh, key issues in the technique. And I think that is one of the things that, that students are not learning today. They're, they're focusing on other things. We hear some, some uh, especially people who are, are not in judo. This is funny because this is where it seems to come from. They'll say, uh, that, oh, in judo, people use the uh, the opponent's uh, strength and size, or their strength and and uh, and weight against them. And if you asked a uh, typical competitive judo person uh, about that, they would probably laugh and say, "Well, that's kind of nonsense," or they would say, "Well, maybe what they really mean is that in judo we use a lot of leverage and mechanics, and and so that's sort of the way that it appears." I would argue, and I would suggest that Mifune Sensei may be trying to demonstrate that, um, that in fact, you do use your opponent's strength and, and size or strength and, and weight against them, and that that is, in fact, a, uh, a key point of judo, but it's part of the high form art. It's not what uh, a lot of people are doing, and you, you'd have to wonder what's going on there. Uh, if you look at the recent video that I did on Osorogari, I've done a couple now, but uh, the recent one I did um, where I was at a clinic and I was demonstrating how you move to set up Osorogari. Now, part of what I'm doing there is I'm showing how if you move correctly, your opponent is sort of forced to follow you or be drawn off balance. And by moving in a certain way uh, and, and, and leading your opponent in a certain way, your opponent does all the work. They, they do the stepping for you. They, they put themselves in position. Your opponent, in fact, draws themselves out and off balance. And that if you continue this uh, at the level of a Mifune, uh, your opponent uh, almost throws themselves. Now, I'm not saying that his ukes are jumping. I have actually spoken with, uh, with one fellow who was an uke for uh, Mifune Sensei in some of those, those videos. And he said that you know when we were on Dory, he ran Dory. I don't, I don't have to jump. You know, the, the man knows how to throw. 
He said, I don't, I don't get nuts. You know, it's, it's like doing, you know, sort of a typical Rondori or light Rondori with somebody. You don't, you know, claw at them and, 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 and scratch and, and fight to, to avoid the throw at every cost. But, but yeah, I mean, he actually does all the work. And, uh, uh, so then they're not jumping, but when you engineer the technique right and the, the movement of uke and set them up, uh, then in fact they power a good deal of the of the technique themselves. This is one aspect of what's called sensen no sen, which has to do with with uh, making it a, a appear leading your opponent, making it appear that that they are taking initiative, but in fact they're they're following uh, your initiative. Um, this leads to a, a, a phrase that I heard uh, for most of my life, and that was Wazawa Hito Nari. Wazawa Hito Nari. Uh, waza is a technique, right? Waza, like uh, your Tokuyo Waza, your favorite technique, uh, uh, you know, Uki Waza, floating technique. Waza is technique. Uh, wazawa means the, the technique, the subject of this sentence. That's what Wazawa means. Uh, wazawa. Hito Nari. Hito is a person, and Nari means they they become or they it they, it emerges as or or uh, uh, evolves as or becomes uh, something. So Wazawa Hito Nari means that the the, the technique, uh, which is the subject of this sentence, uh, becomes uh, a person. Well, that's just a weird statement, right? But this is a, this is a very typical uh, statement among old timers. And the idea is that the, the, the technique uh, takes on a life of its own. And in fact, it generates its own power that uh, if the technique is right, it feels like nothing. And maybe some of you've had that experience where you hit a technique just right and they fly and you go, wow, I didn't feel anything. What was that? Well, that's the wazawa hito nari. That's the the technique is taken on its own life, and it and it it takes the opponent. I've also asked a number of times when I was doing uh, randori with uh, some of these very senior people at this level, and uh, I've had it happen more than once that I was thrown, and uh, as I you know staggered to my feet, I I couldn't for the life of me tell me what they had thrown me with. I couldn't tell what they'd thrown me with. I just knew I'd been thrown. And I took a hard fall, but I wasn't really sure what happened. And and I and I asked, like with my own sensei, I asked him, well, "What what did you throw me with?" I, I I couldn't even tell, you know. And and he would laugh and say, "I threw you with my technique." Now, now that's not just a, a humorous, clever statement. I mean, it's it's much more than that, as I came to understand. Uh, I. I threw you with my technique. And what, what they mean is, is that when I'm fighting you, I'm not thinking in terms of I'm going to do Osorugari or I'm going to do Sionage. They're thinking in terms of I'm going to throw you. And if you look at Gokyo, it gives you this wide range of uh, movements and, and dynamics that you can use to throw someone. So it's teaching you all the various ways that throws can be accomplished. And then at some point, you sort of exceed that. And you're focusing on just throwing your opponent and you know you'll 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 fit something together from the pieces that that you construct along the way so they're saying that my, i throw you with my technique i'm just throwing you and uh and i'm not i'm not throwing you with a a throw and then, and then what happens is is they move into those positions the throw sort of comes together and uh, the little man emerges and 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 you're thrown the person the hito and you are thrown and that's kind of the level you want to be operating at uh, but it takes a long time uh, to get there. Uh, I've also had situations in which uh, when I run door even my own sensei, um, we would be moving around and playing and uh, and he might uh, throw me 10 or 20 times in a row, which he certainly was capable of doing uh, with the same technique, with the same technique. And uh, it wasn't just that I was slow. It might have been some of that, too. But uh, there was something else going on there. And uh, uh, let's, t let's take a concrete example to make this a little bit easier to describe. Uh, say that he threw me with Taiotoshi. So he throws Taiotoshi. And then uh, he throws it 10 or 20 times. 
and each time it is different. Now the 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 internals are all the same, and they're all correct. And I feel like I'm feel like I'm practically jumping into the throw, even though I'm trying to, for the life of me, to get away from it. But everything I do only makes it worse. You know, right? And uh, maybe some of you've had that experience. So one time he'll throw it, and let's again to be concrete. Say he's doing right taiyotoshi. So the first time he may come in and he's leaned out over the left leg and the right leg is extended and bang, over you go. And then the next time he is not leaning that way. In fact, he's driving toward his right leg. He's driving toward the, the other leg as he throws it. The next time he's in a, an almost in a, in a straddle or a split and he's throwing me over the top. And the next time he's throwing me to the side, uh, he, he's varying grips. He's uh, one time he's even throwing with one hand, uh, whatever. He, he's just all over the place. But every time the, the mechanics are perfect, the setup is perfect, the internals of the throw are, are dead on, correct, classic Taiyotoshi. But I'm getting pounded into the floor right and left. And, and what he's doing is he, he's, he's running around in this, this sea of Taiyotoshi and he's pushing all the boundaries. And just for grins, he is going this way and that and just trying all, exploring all of the range of movement that he can do and still be doing Taiyotoshi. He's playing. Now, that's what you may be seeing with Mifune Sensei. He's playing. And, and you may think that sounds silly, but come on. If you could throw like Mifune Sensei, you would. you play. You'd be out there with, with different partners, and you'd be just going around all over the place, going at it from different angles and different directions and just having the time of your life. And you can bet they do too. They enjoy what they're doing. They enjoy their judo. They, they earned that technique. Uh, so it, it, it's, it is peculiar what, what they're, they're trying to achieve. Now, one of the things that I see, and I'm going to mention this, and then I'm going to carry it back into this discussion a little bit. But one of the things that I, um, I see uh, when I'm working with young people now is that uh, gripping is everything. They, they want to grip, and, and heaven forbid anybody get a hold of them. That's their defense. And clearly there's a mindset that if if this person ever gets a hold of me i'm i'm going to get thrown now i've even gone to the point where um uh, if you if you if you if you take a grip they'll they'll jump in in a half-hearted throw and, and throw themselves on their face uh, as a way of avoiding being thrown now i i have to tell you that if you're martial art is based on defending against grips by falling on your face. It isn't much of a martial art. It's not going to take you very far. Uh, but why, why do they do that? Now, now, the opposite is, is that, for example, uh, Nagano Shoso Sensei, he would come out and just, just uh, and hold out his hands and take whatever you want. And you take whatever grip you want. He called that opening the gate in all directions. And Take whatever grip you want, and, and then he would throw you. Uh, and he'd take any, you know, whatever was left, whatever he could get a hold of, and he would throw you with it. And uh, he, he described the fact that when he first started doing that, it didn't go that well. <laughs> but after some time went by, he got where he could do that. Now, now today, I imagine people would, would grab a hold, and the minute he touched them, they'd fall on their face. But I, I would argue that that's just a, 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 a very... Uh, very weak way to fight. Now, I had a, uh, a student in a, in a clinic that I did some years ago. I think he was eight or 10 years old. He was a kid. He was a good kid. And uh, I was trying to instruct him. And uh, he, he liked to do Sioinage. And so I was trying to tell him that you really need to bend your knees, get in lower, make sure your back is erect so you get good, good back contact uh, to be able to make the technique. And, uh, and he was arguing with me, which is already kind of a funny thing that I've experienced in recent years that you've got a, a uh, you know, an eight year old, a yellow belt who's arguing uh, with a red and white belt about how to do the technique the right way. I mean, but, you know, it all, <laughs> it's just the way of things. Anyway, so he, he's trying to argue with me, uh, good naturedly, he's a good kid. And he said, um, he said, but if I, if I try to do that, I'll, I'll fall down. And, and if I go, I have a tournament this weekend. If I try to the tournament, I'll probably fall down and, 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 and it's not going to work. 
Well, there's a certain wisdom to what he's talking about. See, he's been taught that he should be focused on the, the tournament this weekend, that that's, that's what's important, and it's not. It's not important. It's not important in any way, shape, or form. I don't care if it's the Nationals. It's not the most important thing in your judo career. He's, he's focused on the wrong thing, and he's been told to be focused on the short run, but the long run is a whole bunch of short runs, and if all you do is focus on what you can do this weekend, you'll never get much in the long run. And so what he should be doing is investing in his own future. He, he has essentially discarded the possibility of being able to, to develop some really high-level skill for the long run. And, and that's a mistake, and I see that all the time. Now, if you look at somebody like Yamashita Sensei, who was a famous champion, he was all Japan champion, what, 10 times or something like that, five times, I think it was five times. Uh, anyway... Uh, Yamashita Sensei is, you know, renowned for his fighting ability. He took grips. He let his partner take a grip. Yeah, he tried to get a better grip. He, he was constantly, you know, adjusting his grip and doing things, but he was not, uh, you know, fighting all out to avoid getting gripped by his opponent. Um, and so he, he, uh, he was very, very effective, but he had developed that skill over some period of time. He didn't do it overnight. And, and this is what I want to get back to is that if you want to, to become a Mifune as much as any of us can, if you want to develop those kind of high level skills, you have to invest in your own future. You have to, you have to make that happen. You're going to take some, some falls. You are going to make some mistakes. That's okay. Uh, but you're going to have to, to go after it and, and start uh, working on those techniques. Now, uh, the, the, the high level skills that a Mifune is using are similar to the things that I'm trying to teach in some of the videos that I do, where, where you're moving in certain directions and causing your opponent to move and to, to draw them off balance. Uh, so they're very subtle things. And uh, once you, you get those, uh, you'll find that the other things don't, don't make as much difference. Uh, that uh, I even I even discussed, for example, I think in one of the videos I did with the uh, Ashiguruma, where some teachers, the extended leg for the Ashiguruma, they'll point the toe down, others will point it up, others will point it straight across, others will barely brush the leg. And the whole point of it is, is, is that once you get everything else working right, where you put that leg is, is almost irrelevant. You're going to need something to bump your opponent there. That's all you really need. Nothing else is going to matter. So you have to focus on what's really important in this technique, not focus on what mechanics can I put into it? What, what can I do to power this technique to make it work so that I can throw it tonight or throw it this weekend? And you have to work on those skills. You, you can't just set them aside. Uh, I remember in, in my judo class with my sensei that we went through a spell of months where Sensei kept teaching the same technique every night, same technique every night, same technique in the same way every night. And he was very patient. He just kept putting it out there. And finally, somebody, you know, couldn't stand it anymore. And we had a very open, very, you know, good natured exchange in our class. This was not like he was acting inappropriately, but he said, uh, Sensei, you know, you, you did that last night and you, you, you did that last week. I mean, do you think maybe we could do something else? And uh, Sensei looked at him and smiled and said, you know, when when I start to see you using this in Rondori, then I'll know it's time to move on to the next row. He said, you know, I, I don't do this just to show you interesting techniques. I'm showing you things you need to actually put into your practice. And we were all like, Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got me right. You know, I, this is not a throw that I would have thought to use in Rondari, but yeah. Okay. And we started doing it. And sure enough, by then, after a few months of having done the same throw, we were actually throwing people in Rondari with the thing and I threw it in tournaments. Uh, what do you know? Right. The, the old man knew something, you know, um, he was playing a game. He knew that eventually somebody would break down and ask and then, you know, or they would start to use it either way. Um, but that happens a lot. We, we see things, we hear things, then we don't use them. 
We don't try it because, oh, well, I tried it one time. It didn't work. I couldn't make it work. So I went on to the next thing. I got a tournament this weekend or I'm going to run Dory at the end of class. I need something I can use. No, no, you, you need to invest in the long haul. And that's that's how you you become a Mifune. It, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, anyway, I hope this is of some help. Um, I'll try to uh, find other things that I can I can help you with and comment on.